Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe and click on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, a choosing beggar goes to a restaurant for tacos, but once there she realized that what she really craves is all their hand sanitizer. Let's jump right in. A couple of days ago, I was picking up dinner at a local taco joint. When I got there, there was a lady at the register paying for her food. So I waited by the door, which gave me the perfect vantage point for all of this going down. By the register, there was a big pump bottle of hand sanitizer with a sign saying, help yourself, keep your hands clean, or something to that effect. After she paid, as the cashier was turned around to grab her food, the lady took the chance to try and stuff the whole bottle of hand sanitizer into her bag. Her bag was on the smaller side and she had trouble fitting the entire bottle, and she was still wrestling with it when the cashier turned back around. They both froze and stared at each other. What do you think you're doing? It says help yourself. I let out a snort of laughter. The lady turned around and glared at me. Yeah. To like clean your hands, not to take the whole thing. The lady paused for a moment, then apparently decided to double down. Well, then you should make the sign clearer. Anyone with a brain would understand what the sign meant. Well, fine. The lady proceeds to slam the bottle down on the counter, grab her food and stomped over to the soda machine. I thought that would be the end of it, but the lady grabbed one of the small cups that available for you to get water and then came back to the counter and started pumping the hand sanitizer into the cup. That's not what it's for either. Please leave now. I'm trying and failing to hold in my laughter over the absurdity of the situation, but I chime in with a, yeah, that's pretty messed up. The lady gives me another death glare, tells the cashier she'll never be back at this stingy restaurant again, pushes past me and storms out the door. I commiserated with the cashier a bit over how crazy people can be and got my tacos without any more problems. They were delicious by the way. Support your local restaurants if you can and stay safe everyone. This was a little while back. I was 24 and the choosing beggar of the story was 25. I had just moved close to the city in a new apartment with two roommates. My friend, choosing beggar, was planning on going out in the city with a few of her friends to celebrate one of the friend's birthdays. There were three friends, we'll call them the girls, plus choosing beggar. I had never met the girls before. The girls planned on staying in a hotel in the city that night but Choosing Beggar couldn't afford it. Choosing Beggar reached out to me to see if they could all crash at my place. I asked my roommates and they were cool with it. We have two futons in our living room so we could sleep four extra people no problem. I figured a night out with them would be fun. The only issue was that I had to be up early the next morning. I was coaching soccer for kids at the time. This was the type of job I totally could, and very often did, handle after a night of partying. It was only for two hours, so I didn't mind. I told Choosing Beggar that her and the girls could stay, but they had to be out by 8am the next morning, so they'd probably be better off getting a hotel. But if they're okay with that, then I'm okay with it. Sure enough, Choosing Beggar says it's fine, and the girls won't mind. The night of comes and everybody is supposed to be showing up at my place. Earlier in the day, Choosing Beggar had a conversation with her ex that made her so emotionally drained that she just needed some time for herself. So the girls all showed up and Choosing Beggar hasn't even left her house yet because she's just been sulking in bed. Her house is an hour away. When I text her saying, Choosing Beggar, what the flip? She says, my friends are all cool, so it won't be awkward. And all I could think was, you don't just get to decide that. Now I have to sit around with three people I've never met before. My roommates weren't around, so it was just me and the girls. Granted, they were all very nice, and being a single dude at the time, there are worse situations I could have been in than having three girls chilling with me at my apartment. But, 
it was still just a pretty uncomfortable situation for everyone. They even ran out to grab dinner for about an hour, and when they came back, Choosing Beggar was finally just leaving her house, so I had to sit and entertain the girls for another hour. And it wasn't that bad, but it was really the fact that Choosing Beggar just expected me to be okay with that. That was the problem. Finally, Choosing Beggar shows up. We all go out to the bars, one of my roommates joins us, and it actually ends up being a pretty good night. I thought we had moved past the entitlement for the night and could finally have a good time. We come back to my apartment around 3.30 a.m. I tell everyone that we have to go to bed now because I need to kick them out at 8 a.m. the next morning. And they all seemed surprised. It turns out, Choosing Beggar didn't tell them they had to leave early. And the girls kind of just accepted it, but now I look like I'm throwing this on them out of nowhere. That's when Choosing Beggar says, can we just stay here and sleep while you go back to work? We'll probably be here when you get back. If not, we'll lock up when we leave. Then one of the girls joins in with, Yeah, come on, what are we going to do? You really think we're going to rob your house or something? I realize that the four of them are wasted, so there's not going to be any reasoning with them. I play it off as a joke like, Oh uh, yeah, well, now that you say it, you're making me suspicious. It's never the ones you expect. All right, please just go to bed. I finally get them in bed. The next morning rolls around. I even let them sleep a few extra minutes. Then I wake them up. The girls start waking up and getting out of bed. Then choosing beggar says, I seriously don't get why we can't just stay here and sleep. So now in front of all of the girls, I have to be the bad guy. Listen, I told you way ahead of time that I needed you out early. That wasn't a problem then, I can't let you stay here alone because no offense, but I really don't know the girls. But I know them, besides, your roommate is here. Yeah, he doesn't know them either. He knows me? Uh, barely. We'll lock up. Nah, I need you guys out. I could tell that the girls were socially competent enough to realize that choosing beggar was being a choosing beggar, so they understood the situation. But I still felt kind of bad because I basically just had to tell Choosing Beggar that I don't trust the girls right in front of them, and it was just super awkward. So they started getting their stuff together to leave, and of course Choosing Beggar was taking her time getting out of bed. Finally I managed to get him out of the house and I made it to work. Choosing Beggar never thanked me afterwards for letting everyone crash at my place. Story 3 shows us a choosing beggar who answers a Gumtree ad in order to try and steal a bird. So I had my first experience with a choosing beggar today over a bird. I currently own a relatively young cockatoo, a Corella, named Jinx, who is in the process of training right now. Jinx knows basic tricks like step up, step down, spin in a circle, roll over, etc. I posted on Gumtree advertising three cockatiels, as I really don't have time for them anymore and I didn't want to leave them in an aviary with little to no interaction. In the photos I posted, you could clearly see the cockatoo in the background. This is due to the positioning and design of the aviary, and I clearly stated in the ad that the cockatiels were for sale only, and left my number for anyone interested. Within the first hour, I had a phone call and had arranged for someone to meet the birds and see if they wanted to purchase them or not. However, as soon as I was finished with that phone call, my phone rings again. Here comes the choosing beggar. Hello, are you calling in regards to the cockatiels? Hey, no sorry, I'm not interested. I was actually calling to ask about the Corella. Oh, sorry, she's not for sale. Well, you just answered my question. I've been looking for a female Corella for a while now that I want to breed. Sorry, but I just said she's not for sale. I thought this man would just accept the fact that she wasn't for sale and that he would be on his way, but no. Then why did you put a picture up? I put a picture of the cockatiels up, not the Corella. That was the best photo I could get. The cockatiels move around a lot. Sorry for the confusion. Well, that's just misleading. You should give her to me for free because you wasted my time. Excuse me? I've been looking for a female Corella for so long and you just wasted my time. You should give her to me for free as you've just wasted my time. 
Nah, I'm not gonna do that. She's my bird, and if you read the ad, then you would have known it was the cockatiels up for sale, not the Corella. No, your ad was misleading. Give her to me, or I'm gonna report you for being misleading. So report me then. The choosing beggar began yelling, but I was done with this conversation, so I hung up. In our final story, a choosing beggar humiliates the original poster by turning down a job. A mutual friend of one of my besties was going through hard times and was posting quite a bit about how desperate he was for work and mentioned he would need the job to be in the smaller town he was moving to. I had a friend there whose mom worked at a well-known chain. I usually don't stick my neck out for people, but he was super down on his luck and had been very nice to me the few times we'd met. I asked my friend if she would ask her mom if they were hiring. She asked if I'd really vouch for him, and I said yes. He seemed like a really decent person who's having a rough time. He says he's running out of time and options and really needs the help. Long story short, I got him an interview and apparently he was a very good interviewee who really impressed the hiring manager. She pulled some strings and got the company to waive the 90 day wait for benefits to kick in and he flat out told her he didn't want the job because he wanted $1 more per hour. My friend was chill about it but he's the reason I will never do anything like this again for someone else. One dollar more per hour? Absolutely gobsmacked. He would have had merit increases to get that extra dollar. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.